have a, a pair of oldies. I have a Techniques AM FM tuner ST8044 and the stereo integrated DC amplifier SU8044. And these have been sitting in a box. Anyway, uh, this is a couple pieces of my equipment here and I don't know whether they work or not and that's what we're going to find out tonight. Find out if this works and uh, go about uh, repairing it if it doesn't. So I guess the first thing I need to do is I'll connect it to my speakers. We'll test the tuner and the amplifier out and uh, that little friend here. A spider. Where did it go? I saw a spider crawling along. There it isn't. I'm in the garage. What do you expect? Anyway, we'll hook this. We'll hook this uh, tuner up to this amplifier. We'll hook it up to my speakers. Here's my speaker wires. Nice thing about my my bench here is I have my speaker wires are paralleled to my speaker, so I can hook it up to another amplifier as long as I make sure that I've got the the speakers turned off on my test amp then I don't have to worry about causing any damage to it. So let me hook up some speakers, we'll get a, a patch cord to connect the tuner to the amplifier and we'll see if this thing even works. You'll notice the speaker connectors here, you just stick the wire in and give them a twist. This is an old school type of connection. Not necessarily the best uh, way to connect your speakers. I prefer the binding, the real binding post, but again, this was not a real, a real high-end amplifier. The speakers are protected by 3.3 amp fuses on here, so at least the amplifier had some type, a form of fused protection, so the speaker leads were to short. Hopefully, the fuse would blow before uh, there was a problem that caused the amplifier to fail. Unfortunately, that usually wasn't what happened. Usually, these things were. You know, teenagers having a party and they pop the, they turn up too loud, they pop the fuses. So what do they do? They take the fuse out. Some joker unwraps his, uh, gets the, the silver uh, paper from his cigarettes and, oh, here, we'll just wrap this around the fuse. That'll make it work. And the next thing you know, the amplifier is dead. The other nice thing, the older uh, units used to, they have the convenience outlet that you can plug other components in. One of the dumbest things I ever saw, and, I, I'm, and I'm not kidding you here, people can be so stupid. I went out on a service call probably 20, 25 years ago, and their complaint was my stereo doesn't work. They had the power cord from the amplifier plugged into the back like that, and uh, they were wondering why it wasn't working. I kid you not. When you, Everybody's heard the stories of the... Uh, person calling the uh, computer help desk and saying my computer is saying press any key and I can't find the any key believe me they're out there those type of calls do exist okay we've got everything plugged in now let's see if it works let's turn on the power make sure our volume is turned all the way down to zero we'll select the tuner input and we'll see whether we have any stations it's like it's on, looks like it's on AM. Hear that wonderful noise? That's uh, that's DSL from the uh, telephone lines. There's a uh, it operates all the way completely through the AM broadcast band, and uh, every four kilohertz there's a uh, another uh, subcarrier on the telephone lines. And well, we have lots of DSL in the area, including in my house here for our internet. So that, that's what that noise is. So now we're on FM. I don't hear anything. Well, I do.
nothing on the low end. Nothing at all. In fact, I'm not getting anything at all. Oh, that happened in 1992. The same year, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. First, uh, on Z95.3. So the first station I get is 95.3, but we certainly have a lot more radio stations than that. I'm not getting 94.3, 93.7, 89.1. There's nothing. When I turn on the muting, there's nothing at all. So we know we definitely we have a problem with the, uh, the tuner because nothing on the low end of the band is coming in at all. And I've got an antenna connected to it. Let's check out the amplifier here and see that the controls are working on it. Well, I think the only thing wrong with this amplifier is the speaker switch is, is dirty. And, uh, we're going to take that apart and clean that up. Got a nice uh, vacuum fluorescent display for the amplifier power down here. That's nice. Uh, we definitely have a problem in this tuner. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take the amplifier apart and clean up the switch on here because uh, then I can get this one off the bench and we can concentrate on the problem in the tuner. So let's just uh, get the amp apart. I have no idea what the purpose of this is. It's like a, just a black piece of, feels like piece of felt or something. Uh, I have no idea what the purpose of that is other than maybe to restrict the airflow. Um, here we go. It's using STK0039 uh, amplifier ICs. It's an integrated amplifier, so uh, typically they weren't as good as discrete components, but this machine was built about the time when everybody was going to the uh, output ICs as opposed to discrete components to save costs. Techniques were very big on that. On this unit here, You'll notice this is our speaker switch on here. Everything, I'll turn this thing around so you can see it. The switches are all remotely controlled. The switches are actually mounted on the circuit board here. Here are our switches. Okay, we have an input select switch here. When I turn the input control, you can see the switch moving. We have the record output selector switch here. And when I turn the speaker switch, this long connection cable here connects up to the speaker switch and you can see the speaker switch sliding back and forth so they're just they're just uh, linear switches and all this is, is this is just a band inside a sheath that slides back and forth when you turn the control there's a little cam that turns a gear with a tooth uh, plastic I guess it's, it may even be metal but usually it's plastic or a metal band and it pulls the switch back and forth. Again, this was a, a cheap way of trying to uh, save a buck rather than have a physical switch mounted and having to run wires to that physical switch. We'll just put these cheap uh, slide switches on the board and uh, just control them with linkage is the word I'm looking for. So let's clean all the switches on this thing. We'll just get out our good old can of neutral contact cleaner and we'll just spray in here and clean up all these switches while we're at it. That's our input switch. We'll do the same thing for the cord out switch.
and of course the speaker switch. Let's get this one back here. And while we're at it, we will clean the bass treble volume and balance controls. And these are our controls are right up here on the board for that. So we will clean our bass and treble controls right here. This amplifier is actually quite nice and quiet. I don't have any uh, input going into it now, <clears throat> but I don't hear any sound. Right, nice and quiet. I got it. I got it cranked up all the way. Clean the balance control up and clean the volume control, which is in behind here. So we can just put the top cover back on this unit. Button this unit back up and then look at the look at the tuner and see why it's not tuning. 